quick news here to update you regarding something I spoke about on my podcast recently regarding Tower Hamlets and their ban um, concerning um, nudity, which obviously affected a lot of the kink and sex positive parties that happen in Tower Hamlets. Some of them I've, I've obviously been to um, and some of them I haven't been to. But I think the main ones that they were speaking about was Club Club of a Boat. I forgot, I forgot even that's the name. Club something, um, Crossbreed, and another one. I forgot the name. But those three were basically the main ones that are basically trying to protest against this new restriction um, in licensing and just to basically allow them to be able to put on these events in this place because it's something that they've obviously built and cultivated. And uh, especially the, the venue owners like E1 were really stepping up and really basically saying that they want these people to stay and put events on their spaces because essentially they're essentially keeping the lights on there. So all these things were really important and then good news here concerning mixed mag it says tower hamlets have to remove the nudity restrictions licensing conditions following save the kinks spaces protest which is great to see because usually i feel like these protests and these petitions don't do anything and i know that's not the right way to think but they usually don't do anything but it's great to see that for once protesting petitioning talking about it online and whatnot and just kind of making your voice heard actually does make a change and especially in london when you know i said already um one in five clubs are closing and we have less clubs than we've ever had before and things are really on the downward turn it feels like and obviously the news with print works and the course finding hard to find a new location all these kind of things are happening it's nice to see we have a little bit of a light in the tunnel and we have one win at least we can kind of put our hat on and obviously here's an article courtesy of Mixmag that talks about it. it says as follows tower hamlets council has removed restrictive clause in its licensing term that prohibited full nudity in nightlife venues following a protest from queer nightlife groups the decision comes following a hearing last week on tuesday 26th of july over the licensing terms of east london venue e1 studio spaces um proposing an end to, to semi-nudity within the club the venue is home to a number of queer parties including kink friendly Crossbreed, Club Verboten, and later whom were contacted by Tyre Hamlet's Council in March, requesting that a prohibited nudity to try to limit nudity. Now, if you're not familiar with the London scene, these two parties, Crossbreed and Club Verboten, absolutely run the kink scene. There are a few others that exist out there too that are doing their thing, but in terms of being the main spearheads and the, at the forefront of shit, they're absolutely leading the charge. So if these two guys weren't able to put on events and do what they needed to do that that would have like a real ripple effect on the entire scene going forward and then it will drive shit underground which i don't think makes it completely the safest place to be but still you know at least they're around but the fact that there are these legit kind of like you know um by the book events and it's also the underground stuff makes the scene much healthier i feel like when everything is underground it makes it far more of a dangerous place and an easy place for the authorities to come in and start saying oh you're doing bad things but when we have legit things going on and we have stuff on the underground we have a more co cohesive whatever it may be called what's that word called we have a more um, harmonious scene I feel like it continues following the complaint a hearing was set for July over the future of E1 with fears for many within the queer and kings communities that ruling could have knock on effect on the rest of the borough and London as a whole the funny thing that people don't actually realize about E1 regardless if you're into kink or not the lack of air conditioning in there is going to make you be semi-nude or maybe sometimes fully nude it's not the place that you go to in order to cover up. It's a place that you go to in order to kind of disrobe, right? Do you know what I mean? To to take off your garments. You don't go there to put on more garments or to be afraid of people not wearing garments. Everything is so warm in there, man. Organizers behind Club Verboten, um, organizers Save the King Spaces protest outside of Tower Hamlet's Town Club town hall sorry during the hearing it's actually nice that the club nights come together also there's not like comp there's not like aggressive competition they kind of service different scenes different industry whatever same scene but they kind of service different people whatever they can live harmoniously that's good to see because back in the day when i used to promote there was none of this <clears throat> there's none of this um kumbaya that went on between promoters there's a lot of cutthroat shit anyway it continues organizer carver burton said um oh he's actually named he, he named the club night after himself that's fucking cojones, isn't it? 
Jesus Christ. <laughs> Big up Carl. Uh, he said in a statement to Mix My Head of the protest, the council is relying on outdated moralist views without a regard to the diversity and exclusivity in the nighttime economy. Tower Hammers Council is trying to force its judgmentalism on club... Co is that a word? Ju judgmentalism? Fuck. On club operators, promoters, and force them to police gender and sexuality on consenting adults. Yeah, that that thing that they said about semi-nudity and how you have to ask somebody's gender and ascertain what gender they are in terms of if they can take their top off was nuts. As part of the Save the Kink protest, hundreds of people in the queer kink and fetish communities descended on the Tower Hammers Town Hall in popular. Many tuned many sorry turned up in dressed in head to toe fetish wear. Some had brought along their dogs and some brandished signs reading slogans like sexual liberty under threat and bottoms or tops were all hate cops. Oh I love that. That's I want that. That's that should be in a t shirt and a hat in it. That's a fucking great slogan, isn't it? Bottoms or tops, we all hate cops. Definitely agree. As the hearing began, the crowd watched on a small screen from the from the hall's exterior, taking uh, quietly taking time to cheer as a banister. Leo, what's that? Charlem Char Lambids. Leo Chara Lambid, who was representing the appeal of E1's behalf, read out statements in defence of the venue and the wider community. It says as follows: This is one statement. I joined Club Verboten at the end of last year and it was the best club I've ever been to. One attendee at the Save the King protest told Mix Mac to be around sexually open-minded people made me so happy. Being in a safe environment is one of the best things you can do. There's no harm being done whatsoever, especially con compared to normal clubs where more harm is happening. It's definitely true. Even though there was a cases of sexual assault happening in some of these venues, it's still amazing how less how the numbers are so low sometimes incredibly now nil point considering how what people are dressed like considering the monarchy that it's after you know it's under and considering what time people are on in there do you know what i mean people just behave and know what to do and how to respect each other which is flipping incredible to see to be honest and they essentially police themselves with no real external help needed they should you know what i mean that that, that should be a case study that should be kind of implemented in other commercial high street type of clubs because there's something they're doing that definitely those guys aren't it continues another attendee who made um sorry who moved to south london why am i seeing words that are, are not there another attendee who moved to london from berlin lambasted the city's lack of understanding of sex positive culture he's this person said i see a lot of security a lot of control there isn't a there's there isn't a lot of agency for venue owners for those throwing parties or guests to create their own spaces more trash will be good for the city of london to create spaces welcome to london whoever you are welcome to london we don't have there is no such thing as um uh or, or what you call it personal authority or ownership there is no such thing as personal agency it doesn't exist here in london um they don't treat you as adults they treat everybody like a child effectively we're very anti-fun in the uk and in london um yeah that's just the nature of the beast isn't it like i said one of the only places in the world where you have security guards with flashlights on the dance floor making sure you're not doing anything naughty maybe they have them in commercial clubs in ibiza too i've seen that a uh, be a thing where it's a little bit of a hustle where they'll go on the dance floor flash their lights in on you just as about to take the bump threaten to throw you out but then if you offer them 50 euros they, 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 they'll let you stay in <laughs> and it continues Tahamas hammers is now the most progressive council around in actively acknowledging and supporting the existence of kinksters it's the first step towards working collectively on creating a safer space with local communities and for it that's really cool but again they keep themselves to themselves they're not harming anybody most of these events are at night time or during days when no kids are around why don't you just let them do their own thing anyway i don't understand why this has to include the community anyway just let them exist you know maybe give them a code of conduct or whatnot they have to abide by maybe a free strike rule i don't know whatever it may be but let them kind of do their own thing because they're already doing it pretty successfully without the intrusion of these government officials but anyway it continues it took three years longer than we've hoped for but we are super grateful for the committee for taking the time to understand the people of our community free of stigma london knights are amy lammy oh fuck you amy lammy you had nothing to do with this you fucking idiot celebrates it great news i'm thrilled that you won a success with the removal of the restriction of the venue can once again diverse result oh i've got i've got i've got to, i've got to flip in retweet this and say you had nothing to do with this why are you oh my god clout chaser you had absolutely nothing to do with this let's do it clout chaser what a clout chaser what a clout chaser let's let's, let's write that what a clout chaser you had absolutely nothing to do with this <laughs> <laughs> SMH <laughs> SMH Get out of here man
anyone said the same thing to me as, as in the comments or not or am i just the only person that said it maybe the only person that said it who soon knows amazing news thank you for your help oh of course they're gonna say that anyway. but anyway regardless a victory anyway let me not kind of dally and sully this thing uh big up everybody that went to the protest for the save up safe king spaces protest tower hand bullets have effectively rescinded which is something i don't usually see or step back or you know whatever it may be and it's good to see and hopefully going forward we see more of these events happening and we see the community grow and grow and grow in the coming years grow and bloody grow